So now that we have a, a good mutation caller, we had a new mutation caller, then we, we decided to look at mutations across cancer and uh, together with Eric Lander and Mike Lawrence and Petar Stoyanov and Paz Polak, we, we studied the different cancer types. And here's what we saw across 3,000 whole exomes from 27 tumor types. Different, every dot here is a different patient. And um, the, um, the uh, somatic mutation rate varies dramatically across individuals. And even within an, each, each tumor type, there's a, um, there's a huge variation. And these are different tumor types. And you see the rhabdoids and, um, and the hematologic kind of cancers like Ewing sarcoma, sorry, like um, leukemias, et cetera, have low, low um, uh, mutation burden. Whereas melanoma and lung cancer, which are due to known carcinogens, have a much higher mutation burden. This is logarithmic scale. It's, it's a, uh, you, know, you could see a, a, th a thousand fold difference between the top here and the, and the bottom. And just to give you a sense, common germline variations are roughly one every thousand bases. It's the top end of this graph. Rare germline variations are roughly you know, in 10, uh, 10 per megabase and are roughly at this level. And the novel germline variation between kids and their parents is roughly at this level, which is kind of the bottom of, of this graph. We also saw that mutations are caused by different, have different uh, types of mutations. So different substitutions. So for example, the uh, uh, melanoma has a lot of these C2T mutations and cigarette smoke causes a lot of these C2A mutations. And, uh, but others have different signatures. And we, and we looked at, at these signatures in a more detailed manner when we look not only at the type of substitution from a C to a T or a C to an A, we looked also at the base that is prior to the mutated base and one after the mutated base. For example, these all yellow mutations are C2T, but all these in these peaks are Cs that are followed by Gs. And this is what I said earlier, these are the, the CPG2T mutations that occur in every cancer type. And this is what's called now the aging signature, but because it's associated with a higher level of these is associated with age of diagnosis of the cancer. And this is from ovarian cancer, for example, which, which has this uh, majority of the mutations are coming from this um, uh, um, methylated cytosines that uh, change to, um, uh, to T's. Um, so there are 96 different um, um, uh, types of mutations here. The, the six different mutations time, times four of the preceding base and four of the following base. When we look across cancer, we see different of these Lego plots, we call them, and uh, you can see in lung cancer. And one of the, the things that to identify here in lung cancer, you also see it in cervical cancer and in, in bladder cancer are these spikes here. And, and these spikes are, are not noise and, and they're not caused by cigarette smoke or the, or the UV that you see in even melanoma. Um, uh, we didn't know what is that in, at the beginning, but, uh, but then um, uh, later we, we find out. One additional signature we found was in, in, um, in esophageal cancer together with Adam Bass and and Austin, uh, we found um, this signature associated with gastroesophageal reflux. Now we see it also in other cancer types. Uh, this is this A, A to AC, uh, which uh, may be due to um, uh, gastroesophageal reflux, but it's not clear because we see it now in other cancer types that are not related to, um, to gastric uh, uh, cancer, but it, it, it's not clear what exactly causes these, these mutations. So to analyze these different signatures, um, uh, in, in kind of in parallel with, the, with our kind of Sanger colleagues, um, um, we, we use this NNF uh, method. Um, uh, we, we looked at it in a different way. We, um, we uh, looked at it in at, uh, rates of mutations where the, the Sanger colleagues looked at the counts of mutations, but it's essentially the, the, uh, the same type of analysis where we look at different patients and these 96 different types of mutations. And we try to, deconvolve this matrix to a product of two smaller matrices that represent the different processes or signatures of mutation. In, um, and then for every patient, we could have the activity of every signature in that patient. And, uh, and uh, so we apply this non-negative matrix factorization to this matrix and, and indeed identify six different signatures at that point. Um, this algorithm, you actually have to tell it how many signatures to look for. We identify six. The first one is actually a, a sequencing artifact that's seen in, in, uh, in AML in TCGA. 
Um, uh, this is a, a smoking cigarette. This is the UV signature. This is the Apobec signature. Um, and this is the CPG to T kind of aging signature. And this is all the other kind of mutations. And we could cluster samples based on the activity of these six different signatures. And you could clearly see these are the leuke uh, leukemia with the artifact. Um, uh, here's the, the, these samples are, are um, melanoma with a UV signature. Um, uh, these samples here are lung cancer. This is the smoking signatures and uh, the CPG2T occurs everywhere, and, uh, and that's um, and the, and the um, uh, TPC, this is kind of the Apobec or HPV, and, and these occur um, mostly in bladder cancer and cervical cancer and some head and necks. Um, then uh, the Sanger group um, uh, studied 7,000 tumors and recorded 21 different signatures and then continued with version two with 30 signatures, and just recently, uh, together with them and analyzing the pan-cancer analysis of whole genomes with uh, more than 2,500 uh, whole genomes and, and additional um, uh, extra whole genomes and exomes, we identify roughly 49 um, um, uh, signatures of, of single base substitutions, but um, um, also now we are looking at signatures of double, double uh, uh, base substitutions and indels, and you could read this about this in this extra reading slide here of, uh, of the recent uh, papers. In the lab, we developed signature analyzer, which is a kind of a, a Bayesian approach for NMF. It's called the um, automatic relevance determination method that basically you don't have to tell it how many signatures to look for, but it, it um, in a, gives you something like a posterior distribution of the number of signatures. And we, um, uh, uh, Jay Gilkim developed this method. Uh, it's described in this um, uh, Kassar Kimetal and Kimetal here. And then we used it in different other uh, publications from the lab. And we have now recently accelerated this method to run on GPU, and we could run things extremely fast um, uh, on, on GPUs. But uh, I think if you really want to understand what's the sla 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 latest kind of a state of the art in, in signatures, uh, you, you could read the, this uh, most recent uh, PCOG paper. So I will um, uh, stop here for questions. Uh, uh, Ludmil has uh, started at Sanger, now he's a PI uh, at UCSD. Uh, Jagel uh, uh, was in my group for many years, now we moved to industry, and Nick Ardvala uh, uh, was an ACB uh, and now a PhD student in my lab. Do you have any questions so far? Uh, how, how do you determine the, uh, number, uh, the number of the uh, inner dimension uh, in the uh, non-negative mathematics uh, multiplication? So either you supply it, if you use the, the kind of the naive uh, uh, NMF, or the classical NMF, but if you use this uh, Bayesian NMF approach, and you could read about it in this paper, it actually um, um, starts with many signatures, and then uh, in, a, in an iterative kind of process, um, it has some priors, of course, but in an iterative process, um, sees how many are relevant um, uh, uh, features that are needed to explain this, the data, and you could run it from many times in different iterations, and you get kind of a distribution of numbers. So you can have, you know, there's 80%, there are five signatures, and or, or 20 signatures, and, uh, and there's uh, 10%, 10, uh, 19 signatures, et cetera. You typically get the distributions like that. But I, I urge you to read more about this um, method that um, identifies um, generates kind of a distribution of number of signatures and then you could select that the kind of the most likely one thank you